Summary of DNA by Dennis Kelly. In part one of the play, a group of London kids who are friends from school and who often hang out in small groups or cliques find out something bad. Mark and Jan, who are both scared and worried, tell Leah and Phil that their group needs to get together and talk. Mark and Jan go to a small wooded area where they meet Lou, John Tate, and Danny. Leah, who talks a lot and worries about the meaning of life, and Phil, who never speaks and always eats, follow them there. John Tate is the clear head of the group. He is confident and sure of himself, and he thinks he is a scary person at school. The others seem to be scared of him. Danny is a serious student who is worried about how what happened will affect his plans for the future. Lou is a gloomy girl who is sure that everyone is going to die. Soon, Richard, Kathy, and Brian join the group. Richard tells them that Adam, a classmate, has died. As Adam's story unfolds, it becomes clear that Mark, Jan, and a few other people tormented and tortured him as a kind of hazing right because he wanted to be their friend. The group's jokes got more and more dangerous until Adam fell down a mine hole on the edge of town. The others now think he is dead and start to think of ways to hide the fact that they accidentally killed a classmate. Phil speaks up and explains a complicated plan to make it look like Adam was taken away. The other people are surprised by how detailed Phil's plan is, but he seems sure it will work. At the end of the scene, though, Leah is worried that their group is in a lot of trouble. In part two, Leah's philosophical thoughts get stronger, and she starts to wonder why people are here on Earth. She tells Phil that she killed her pet rat Jerry for reasons she can't explain. She also says that since Adam went missing four days ago, things have been better socially at school. Back in the trees, Danny tells them that the man they said was Adam's kidnapper in their fake police report has been caught and taken into custody. Kathy says that she got DNA evidence against the man by going to a local post office and looking for a guy who fit the description Phil asked them to give. Lou and Leah are furious, and Danny says they can't let an innocent guy go to jail. Brian, who made the original police report, is afraid of having to go back to the station to name the suspect. However, Phil tells Brian that if he doesn't do what he's told and go back to the station, there will be serious consequences. In part 3, Mark and Jan meet Leah and Phil as they are having a lunch in a field. Leah is talking about Adam's funeral, which happened not too long ago, and Phil is eating a muffin. Leah says that she is worried about Brian, who has been so upset that he has been heavily drugged, and John Tate, who hasn't been seen in weeks. Mark and Jan take Leah and Phil to the woods because there is new information. Kathy, Brian, Phil, Leah, Mark, Lou, and Jan stand around a boy in the woods who is dressed like a tramp and has a terrible head wound. Phil knows right away that the boy is Adam and says hello to him. Brian says that he and Kathy found Adam living in the woods. He had no idea what had happened to him. Adam says that he has been living for a few weeks on leaves and raw rabbit. He is in obvious physical and mental pain, and he doesn't know who he is or where he comes from. Adam doesn't answer when Phil asks him if he wants to go back to society. Phil tells Brian to take Adam back to where he's been living. He then tells everyone else to go home and not talk about what they've seen. Leah begs Phil to help Adam, but Phil tells her that if they tell anyone what they've done, their lives will be over. When Brian, who is still highly medicated, comes back, Phil tells him to take a plastic bag and go play a game with Adam. He shows Brian how to effectively strangle Adam and kill him for real this time. Leah tells Phil to stop because Adam is still living. Phil says that if everyone thinks Adam is dead already, it doesn't matter if they kill him again. In part 4, Mark and Jan talk about how they haven't seen Leah in a long time and have heard rumors that she has changed schools. Richard and Phil sit in a field together and talk about how the social scene at their school has changed. John Tate seems to have found God and is now an evangelist, while Brian's medicines have made him so high that he's almost catatonic. From what they said, it sounds like Phil has quit school. Richard begs Phil to come back, but Phil doesn't answer. Richard talks about a big wind of dandelion 
Fluff he saw earlier that day and says it made him think about life on other worlds and the point of being alive. Phil just sits there and doesn't say anything. About the author. Dennis Kelly grew up in a big family in North London. At age 16, he quit school to work at Sainsbury's, a British grocery store company. When he joined an amateur theater group at the Barnett Drama Center, he learned about acting and writing. Kelly went on to get a first-class honors degree in drama and theater arts from Goldsmiths College at the University of London. Kelly has become a well-known and prolific writer for theater, movies, and television over the last 20 years. Kelly's best-known plays are Debris, Love and Money, and DNA. His book for the Royal Shakespeare Productions remake of Roald Dahl's Matilda in 2010 won him Olivier and Evening Standard Awards. In 2013, the show went from London's West End to Broadway, where it won five Tony Awards, including one for Best Book of a Musical. People often say that Kelly's plays are dark, violent, and thoughtful, and that they usually ask big, hard questions of the audience. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.